Sing me a song of a last that is gone. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylee and today is Tuesday, which means it is Outlander video day. Now, each and every single Tuesday, I have been bringing out a different Outlander related video to try and get us all through Droughtlander. If you're new here and you're like, what is Droughtlander? It is the time that we basically have no Outlander related things coming out, e.g. books or TV series. Uh, Outlander itself is a fantastic book series that was turned into a TV show and has basically gotten itself the biggest fandom you'll ever imagine. It's a fantastic series and if you haven't watched it, I highly recommend it. Find a bookstore or a library or a subscription service that offers this TV show because you will not be disappointed. But if you're not new here and you are watching this regularly, you know that we have just started a new sort of series within this series. And that is I am starting to recap all of the original episodes. So we started off last week with Season 1, Episode 1, Sassanac. And today I want to talk about Season 1, Episode 2, Castle Leoc. Now initially when I first watched the series as a run through, I was just absolutely mesmerised by Season 1. It is still to this day my favourite season of the entire show. Um, but with this episode in particular, I always back it on to episode one instantly. Episode one is not one of those ones that you can just go, oh, that was good and turn it off. You have to watch episode two. So to me, in my mind, episode one and episode two kind of merges together because it's sort of, I've never watched one without the other, if that makes any sense. Now with this episode, it is an episode that you do get a lot of information and you do meet a lot of pretty key characters. When you first jump into the uh, episode, Mrs. Fitz is one of the first brand new characters to, to come into play. Now she is a lovely character, don't get any sort of disheartness from her. I, Mrs. Fitz is just, I love Mrs. Fitz. I loved her from the moment I saw her, she just has this aura of kindness and even though it, it, you're just sort of like oh she doesn't trust you Claire you still love her she's just absolutely lovable we also meet Colin McKenzie and his son Hamish we meet Galus Duncan and we of course meet Leary now straight off the bat when you meet these characters at their individual time points in the episode you do know that they're going to be sort of bigger characters. You get that sense straight away. Now when you meet Colin McKenzie you know he's the leader of the clan and and he's just like the mighty number one. Then you meet Hamish and initially Hamish is playing with Dougal. So of course when Claire goes into her you know dinner that night she's starting to be interrogated by Colm and slips up a bit when she just assumes that Hamish is Dougal's son. Ultimately you see that there's some sort of tension in regards to this and even though you can't pick it up straight away you definitely know that there is the possibility that Colm is not Hamish's father. At least that's what I got when you sort of you can feel the tension between Colm and Dougal and you know in regards to young Hamish. Another thing about this episode that I absolutely love that happens very early on is you get to see a full deconstruction sort of thing of Claire's now time period dress piece. Now her, the costumes throughout this entire show, no matter what season you're in, are spectacular. But to see this one in its full glory from shiv to dress to just, you know, you get the full idea of how much effort and how extreme the costumes are right when you see Claire get her new iconic dress. I absolutely love this scene for the points of historic fact that you get to see the different layers of the dress. It's just a fantastic scene. This episode though does not let you forget about poor old Frank who is you know in the future or in the past or however you want to look at it. It doesn't let you forget that he is still in existence. So during Claire's sort of uh, interrogation she does have scenes that flash back to well, her future, but the past, you know, something that she's experienced with Frank. So how would you explain that? Jumps to the future, but it's her past. You do get to see these scenes and you do remember that Frank is somewhere out there living his life and, you know, wants to know where Claire is. It's also good how they do it in little snippets so that you know, okay, Frank, you know, was obviously going to give her the information about interrogation and Claire knew that she was being interrogated with Colm. But she sort of slipped up a little bit. But you still get that connection of her life with Frank. And 
the snippets though they aren't big chunks of you know episode where it's like oh that was 15 minutes and we okay we know a bit more better of past but it was just so well done that it was like okay a couple of seconds yep they, oh yeah frank oh i forgot about frank and then it sort of brings you back into oh but she's being interrogated i really loved how they incorporated that sort of scene jump I forgot to mention the characters of Rupert and Angus. Now, I absolutely love Grant O'Rourke and the fact that the, the whole character of Rupert, I love. Angus is funny too, but Rupert is my just ultimate favourite. I love the banter that happens when they are following Claire around and reporting everything that she does back to Dougal. It just gives that real juvenile but... I, I just absolutely love it. Now this does different uh, or different does different it does differentiate from the books, but it's not that big a deal. I mean they're not even massively big. Well, no, they are big characters in the books, but I love the TV version the most of Rupert and Angus because they're just they're just lovable Larrikins, and I I really appreciate that the TV series put them into play. It was just a fantastic move. It could be worse. I'll be sharing guard duty with Angus, and you'll not be finding him as charming as myself. The chemistry, of course, between Jamie and Claire becomes very apparent in this episode during the horse stable scene when they are together. I mean, look, it, their chemistry is just prominent throughout the entire season. Throughout every episode, you can see their chemistry. But I think in this particular episode, it's where you really start to see, okay... Jamie and Claire are going to be the love interest. There's going to be that connection because it's already apparent and you can see it as clear as a day. When you first meet Galus Duncan also in this episode, that's what I mean. This episode was just absolutely full of meeting new characters that you have to remember if it's your first time watching. So Galus Duncan, when we first meet her, you're like, oh, fantastic. Claire has found an ally. She has found a friend. This is how it's going to go. If you're a seasoned watcher, you know to now pick up on certain things that are being said and done, and it's like, oh yes, I, mm, well done, that's going to come in handy in a few more episodes or years or whatever. And I just, but when you first initially meet Galus for the very first time and you haven't read a book, you truly think, wow, there's a great ally and somebody that is going to have Claire's back because they're both in the same sort of medical, like, well, which medical, you know, they're down the same sort of path. And it's like, they're definitely going to be together. This is, okay, this is her friend, this is her ally. But I don't know, what did you think? When you very first met Galus Duncan, what were your thoughts on her? Were you like, oh, I don't like you, you're going to be nasty or needy or was it the complete opposite and you're like me and be like oh Claire's found an ally thank god because she's she's going to be interrogated she is not going to survive this little time jump like she needs friends she needs help and this is who is coming forth to be that wow was I wrong Overall, Castle Leoc is a fantastic episode. It is one that I feel people should definitely concentrate on if you're initially watching. It does have, like I said earlier, a lot of information and a lot of characters come into play. So you need to sort of be on the ball and watching and listening and seeing the interactions that different characters have to really, you know, dive deep into storylines that are going to play out. This is one of my favourite episodes, as I've said, but you must watch it directly after episode one, I feel. Just to have that as an entire episode. One and two is just one long play. That is how I have always watched it, like I said earlier. And yeah, just really, it makes it magical. It makes it feel like a full-length movie. Well, not quite, but almost. I'd love to know what your favourite episode of season one is and when we get to it, what do you actually want to know about that episode or what do you want to discuss or rehash? I would absolutely love to know what you guys think and if you are happy with me to continue the season one recaps. That's going to be it for this episode and I hope to see you all next week for another Outlander video being released on Tuesday. Stay safe everyone and have a great week. Bye! Sing me a song of a last that is gone.